they will start to show the tar uh, looking uh, stains in their uh, fingers, either between the two fingers here, uh, as we, they, they hold the cigarettes, and as you see it in the slide, uh, it can also, the tar stains and nicotine stains can be seen also in the nails, where it will have the brownish color uh, in the nails, and these are all nicotine stains that indicates that your patient uh, that you are examining is a smoker. Whether, whether he's telling you that or he's not telling, you can discover these signs easily in the hands uh, of uh, the patient. Uh, we go through, uh, through the, the uh, hand examination and the next thing that we look at will be looking for finger clubbing. Uh, the finger clubbing, uh, actually that can be see or seen in some patients, there are different causes of them, uh, is a very important sign uh, because it can tell you uh, that whether your patient is sick and then you start to have the list of uh, causes of clubbing so that you can point out to a cause. Uh, but before you, you remember the list and you start telling, it is important to know how you can carefully look at uh, the f uh, fingers of your patient to find clubbing or no clubbing. There are three important signs can, that can indicate uh, whether your patient has uh, finger clubbing or not. Uh, the flat angle, this, this is the list, softness at the nail bit, and the drumstick appearance. And it will, uh, I will uh, start one by one in, in, the, in the other slides. The flat angle and how you discover them. Uh, actually, you look at the angle between the nail and the nail bit, okay, which is an angle that, uh, as you see it in the slide, that is usually is not flat. You will see an angle uh, uh, normally in normal people. Uh, it will not be beyond 180 degree. It should be less in normal people. However, when you start to see flat angle, and the angle is almost 180 degree, this is a sign of flat angle. The best way at looking at the angle is will be from the profile, uh, and actually you come down and look at patient hands, rather than you raise the patient hands. Because to keep your patient comfortable, that you start to come down and look whether the angle is preserved or not. Remember that your patient has a lot of fingers and has two hands. So it's not enough to say, to look at one hand and one finger and say no clubbing or even clubbing. You have to look carefully and you have to look at both hands and look at more than one finger uh, in both hands. Uh, and this will make sure that there is flat angle or no flat angle. Okay, so we're still at the flat angle, and, and uh, this is another slide just to tell you how do you see flat angle or not. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, the, the slide indicates the normal, the early clubbing and late clubbing that you can see in your patient. Uh, the, the flat angle issue also include what we call as the Schomburg uh, sign. And, so, and this is important to know how to uh, perform it. Uh, and uh, it is important when you are not sure about the angle, whether it is preserved or it is flat, uh, or when you have disagreement between you and uh, another colleague, then you use this uh, sign. Uh, and this sign actually uh, will tell you whether the angle is totally flat or the angle is preserved. And uh, the, the way of doing it is, as seen in the slide here, is that you will have two fingers and probably will apply it to our patient. So we had the kida, here, the kida finger. Okay, and you start to look at uh, the angle between the two fingers. Uh, as expected, if the angle is not flat and still preserved, you will start to, s uh, you will still see what we call as a diamond shape between the two fingers, as, as a diamond shape space between the two fingers. If, you, if the angle is, is lost and the two fingers are having 
clubbing, then the diamond sh shaped space will be lost and you will see the angle totally flat and you cannot see the diamond shaped space, empty space between the two angles. So this is, uh, okay, halas. Remember, when you, whenever you ask your patient to do something, you have to show him how to do it properly. And once you finish, you ask him to relax, not to continue doing the same thing for a long time. So your instructions to the patient is very important to be clear. And you uh, ask the patient to do what you need. And once you finish that, you ask your patient to rest. Okay, so I finished by the doing this sign, and here the uh, actually uh, diamond-shaped space is still preserved. So my patient here does not have flat angle, and he's still not showing the signs of clubbing. Another sign of clubbing that you should always look at also that you start to feel as you feel that you start to feel the uh, actually uh, nail bit uh, of the patient, uh, uh, which is the part of uh, the finger that is above the nail, just above the nail. Uh, and uh, you start to feel it, okay? And in patients who are normal, uh, this place will be firm uh, and is not spongy. Uh, those who started to have clubbing, they will start to have softness at the nail bit spongy feeling, and some books even call it fluctuation, although I don't like the term fluctuation, because usually it points out to fluid. This is not fluid. Uh, so you just feel it, uh, as seen in the slide there, uh, and you can see the way they are, that uh, video shows how to feel for the softness at the nail bit, and if the patient started to have clubbing, the nail bed will be soft and spongy. So this is the second uh, sign. The third sign that can appear with advanced clubbing is the drumstick appearance of the fingers. Uh, again, look at all fingers, both hands. Uh, the drumstick appearance will be as shown in the slide here, that the tip of the finger will be more uh, prominent and it will look like a drumstick uh, at the tip. Okay, this is usually a third degree clubbing, which means advanced clubbing. And uh, this is uh, actually also indicate the clubbing. If you see one sign, it's one degree clubbing. If you see two signs, two degree clubbing. And if you see all the signs and the drumstick appearance, this is advanced clubbing or third uh, degree clubbing. Uh, so, so you can, by this way of careful examination, you can tell whether your patient has finger clubbing or not. Uh, once you finish that, then you go next to look, looking for wasting at the hands, okay, muscle wasting, and can be seen uh, muscle wasting uh, in the hands of the patient by looking at the thinner and hypothinner muscles. And if the patient started to be wasted, the thinner muscle will look as flat. In normal people, the muscles will be bulky, okay, as you see also in my hands, will be bulky. And if the patient start to have wasting hands or wasted hands, uh, he will start to show flattening of this bulk, as you see it in the slide. Uh, and that indicates uh, clubbing in the hands. Uh, the same slide here also shows that you can look at the uh, dorsum of the hand and you can see the interosseae. The interosseae muscles are the ones uh, that we see between the tendons. And if, you, if there is wasting, you can see that the tendons will appear more prominent and you can see them. Uh, and if there is no wasting, you would not be able to see that. And the slide indicates here the wasted hands and the unwasted hand. So uh, if you find this wasted, then you comment on it in case you can tell that there is wasted hand or that, that you discovered that the uh, hands of the patient are wasted. Still we are at the hands. 
And, uh, and at this uh, stage, uh, the, probably the last point in hand examination is we look for what we call as flabbing tremor or asteritis. And this is, uh, or these are jerky movements of the outstretched hand that the patient will show. Uh, and uh, it is important to recognize uh, whether your patient has flabbing tremor or asteritis or not. Uh, there are a lot of uh, causes of uh, of, of tremor, but in respiratory system, uh, there are uh, respiratory uh, f uh, failure of type 2 that can show uh, uh, with a sign of flabbing tremor. So it is important to look at whether your patient has flabbing tremor or not. And uh, what we do usually to look for that, we ask the patient to outstretch his hands at the elbow here. Come on, Hadi, And then we ask him also to keep his uh, hands like this up and actually separate his fingers his fingers like this and then we just wait to see whether our patient has tremor or not some patients they will start to show that uh, as as uh, flabbing tremor and it is shown in the slide here in this video clip that I put on the slides that the, the flabbing tremor will appear and you can see that uh, it, it will be. So some patient may not show it immediately right away, and you may have actually to evoke that and make, make it appearing. And the way to do that is you hold the hand from here and push the hands, so you hold the forearm, sorry, and push the hands backwards and release it, release it. And in patients where there is labyrinth tremor, you'll start to see the tremor now more prominent. Uh, because some patients may hold their hands and start to uh, keep the flammed tremor away. But the, this maneuver will not lim let them do that, and you can actually make it clearly appearing. So before you say there is no flabbing tremor, you better to do this maneuver, and better to do it also at both hands, and again wait for seconds to see whether you start to see the flabbing tremor, and always the hand has or the arm has to be kept outstretched from the elbow so that the patient will show if he has flabbing tremor. Our volunteer here does not have flabbing tremor, but this video tape that we are seeing in the slide is showing that. Fine. So uh, always support your patient as you go through because he will start to be exhausted. So speak to him, telling him that things will be over soon. Yeah, so that you can carry on with the examination of your patients. The second uh, uh, or the next step here that I recommend is we to go to vital signs now after we finish the general appearance, the hands, uh, we go to vital signs and we check pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate, temperature and pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry nowadays is considered uh, consider very important and to be added to vital signs. However, the list of vital signs, the technique, the maneuvers of listing the vital signs will be given to you in a separate session of vital signs. So I will not go through these details, but it is actually important step to do before you go further.